Uh, Namaskar, good morning. It is a pleasure to join all of you here. And uh, let me begin first by uh, uh, welcoming all of you on behalf of the World Bank. Uh, my uh, respects to the uh, members sitting here in the dais, the leadership, and uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I think I'd like to take off uh, uh, from where the minister left off, or indeed uh, echo a few of the comments that the minister has made. You know, when I look at uh, uh, India, uh, there are significant debates that are happening. Where is the source of growth for future India? Today, India is growing at about 7% uh, uh, per annum. And what's fascinating about this growth, that it has been steady increasing over the past decades, that it is stable, that it's diversified, and that it's quite resilient. Now, for a country of this size to have this kind of a growth path is quite extraordinary, and I think that has not been appreciated enough. We've always debated, is India 7, 7.5, is it 6.5? But few have uh, debated the nature of this growth path, which is quite extraordinary. But the debate is correctly moving on to its next phase. What will push India to 8%, 8.5%, which is absolutely needed to bring down the poverty to below 3% and to give India the ability uh, to have shared prosperity between its diverse, uh, diverse states? And here we look at different sources of, uh, or drivers of growth. Some would say it's urbanization. It's the cities and towns of India that will drive, uh, drive the stories. Others will say that it's agricultural productivity that will drive the growth of India. Some will say, well, it's actually exports. There are a lot of entry paths into moving India from its current 7% growth rate and move it into 8, 8.5. But there can be absolutely no doubt that the whole area of connectivity and logistics is absolutely necessary for India to move to its next growth path. And this is why today's conference is so important. Uh, but when we talk about connectivity and logistics, we have to give, uh, uh, give India its due for one of the most important, uh, important uh, policy decisions that have been made in a federal context. It has taken a long time. It has not been perfect, it has been difficult, its implementation is challenging, but the goal is absolutely clear, and that's the arrival of GST and creation of a unified market. But now that GST is moving forward, if it is not underpinned by an effective investment in a framework of connectivity and logistics, the returns to the GST framework will not be what, it's, what, it, what it can be for India. Uh, and the whole story of logistics underpins the next phase of where a unified market uh, of India can lead to the growth path. Indeed, if we look at some of the analytical models, empirical models that are coming out, in the next five to seven years, the gains from internal integration of markets in India will produce greater welfare gains than India's integration into global markets. We know that India's integration to global market, which continues, is ultimately uh, the source of long-term growth. But in the immediate five to seven uh, years, how internally the market of India integrates will become a main driver of its growth. And again, the whole notion of logistics and connectivity becomes extremely important. But uh, the challenge is quite unique. The country has a land mass of 3.3 million kilom square kilometers, a coastline of 7,500 kilometers, 29 states and 4,000 industrial clusters, moving about 2,000 billion ton kilometers of manufactured goods to 801 spatially distributed key consumption centers. How do you create a logistics and connectivity frameworks to leverage this incredible uh, uh, space that is in front of uh, uh, front of India, an incredible space which is which is a market. Now the immediate uh, immediate uh, uh, reaction would be it's all about infrastructure investment. Infrastructure investment is needed, but it's not sufficient. It is extremely important to uh, to stress that logistics story requires a mix of policy reforms, regulatory reforms and investment in infrastructure. Just to give you a sense of that, 
If you look at uh, the World Bank's uh, Logistics Performance Index, which is used to rank uh, countries, it has six components. These components are efficiencies of customs and border management clearance, the quality of trade and transport infrastructure, the ease of arranging competitively priced shipments, the competence and quality of logistics services, the ability to track and trace consignments, the frequency with which shipments reach consignees with scheduled or expected delivery times. These six categories tell you that it is about policy reforms, regulatory reforms, and investment in infrastructure, which is why when the minister says that the choice of government of India to move the whole logistics story to commerce reflects a very important signal that it is a transversal policy decision, not a siloed, if you will, vertical policy decision. And that's a challenge because if anything that I've learned from the World Bank, we cannot integrate our education department with our health department, with our water department. Imagine a government of the size of India trying to integrate across uh, different ministries to deliver the logistics story. How you integrate that set of ministries with its different machineries will either make it or break it for government of India in terms of the impact that logistics uh, can have. And this, the minister is clear, and the prime minister is very clear in putting this responsibility in commerce, which is not responsible for infrastructure and transport, which is not responsible uh, for how customs, uh, customs works. But it has to be a leader in actually making all of this work in an integrated fashion. And that's a challenge. I must say that if there, are, if there are states that are thinking that the traditional centrally sponsored scheme is the way that uh, logistics systems will work, the news is, uh, is already out. The old traditional centrally sponsored schemes cannot drive the, uh, the story of logistics in India. It's an entirely different framework of management, of investment, of financing that will be needed, especially given the fragmented nature of the way logistics works today in, in India. And that is a huge, huge challenge. All of that, in addition, you have to worry about how you bring in the private sector. The private sector is the backbone of a logistics system at work. If you want to move, uh, if you want to move goods, peoples, and services, the private sector becomes an extremely important uh, partner of government. But how you take a fragmented, and I would say a private sector that's not ready to take on this challenge and actually provide the incentives, the regulatory framework, and build its capability to actually take on this challenge, absolutely big, uh, a very big question that the Commerce Ministry must ask. I raise these issues of, uh, uh, of the challenge of the transversal coordination, of the linkage between policy, infrastructure, uh, regulatory reform, of the need to figure out how to bring in, uh, bring in the private sector, because that's, in effect, the types of conversations that are going to unfold in the workshop uh, in the coming, uh, coming, uh, uh, coming hours. And I hope that if there is one conclusion of this workshop, it's simply this, that Government of India takes from this workshop the global lessons and crafts its way forward. Because the signal now must be very clear how it's going to implement the logistics, uh, logistics framework uh, in, in India. At stake, simply put, it's a difference between 7 and 8.5 percent growth rate, and that's a huge stake uh, for India. Uh, we from the World Bank uh, are proud to be a partner of India in this endeavor, but also very, for a very selfish reason, because as India learns how to manage its logistics sector, it will have lessons for the rest of the world. There will be a lighthouse effect of India that we are all anticipating and waiting. And if nothing else, our job as the World Bank is to learn the process as India moves forward and to be able to share it with many other parts of the world that have to come into the global system of logistics. And uh, you will no doubt agree that in today's political economy, when there is so much uh, discussions about how open the world trading system is, this workshop is going to signal 
that the world trading system has to remain open for nations to be able to deliver on their promise of growth, poverty reduction, and shared prosperity. I wish you all success. Thank you very much.